did you know? Did you know that the skin is the largest organ in our body and actually makes up 15% of our body weight? The average human therefore carries a dachshund's worth of skin, roughly 10 kgs covering 2 square meters. The skin is the body's first line of defense against the outside world. What I mean by the outside world is all the microbes, the single cell bacteria, the, the viruses, the fungi, which are all around us all the time, chemicals as well as electromagnetic waves. Did you know that our skin cells contain a complex internal clock that runs on a 24 hour rhythm that is influenced by the body's master clock in the brain? So this master clock in the brain is called the SCN, the suprachiasmatic nucleus. And this 24-hour rhythm that we follow is a day and night cycle or a light and no light cycle, which is called the circadian rhythm. So all of these are very important to keep our health up and running all the time. So the suprachiasmatic nucleus is stimulated by light, and that sends a signal to every organ in the body which have clocks, including the skin. Did you know that the skin has five types of sensory receptors? Yes, five different types. They are chemoreceptors, pain receptors, thermoreceptors, mechanoreceptors and photoreceptors. So chemoreceptors get stimulated by changes in the chemical concentration of, sub of substances rather around us. Pain receptors are stimulated by tissue damage or if someone puts pressure on your skin. Thermoreceptors are stimulated by changes in temperature. Very important because if you touch something hot, you withdraw your hand as soon as possible or withdraw your body or your leg from that heat as soon as possible. Mechanoreceptors are, are, are stimulated by changes in pressure or movement. So you know if someone is holding your hand or pressing your hand or your hand is against, you know, lean, you're leaning against something. Photoreceptors are stimulated by light energy. And these are quite important because people think that, uh, you know, the skin doesn't really look into the um, light around us, but it does. So if you sleep in a dark room, it does make sense when compared to sleeping in a bright room. Did you know that your gut and your skin are symbiotic? That means they help each other in various biological processes. That means the skin helps this, the uh, gut with supplying bacteria and the gut helps the skin by supplying bacteria as well. So the skin can become very unhealthy if the microbiome or the bacteria or single cell organisms in the gut goes into a state of dysbiosis. Dysbiosis is mayhem. What happens is the good bacteria in the, in the gut overwhelms or gets gets overwhelmed rather by the bad bacteria in the gut and that causes a state of inflammation and since the skin and the gut speak to each other with chemicals as well as exchange of flora this becomes a big problem so it works on the immune system as well this immune system gets modulated by the gut flora and so there's very good evidence to show that eczema or atopic dermatitis is partially due to the dysbiosis or the dysregulation of the gut flora, which naturally speaks to the skin and the whole thing gets disrupted. So it does make sense for some people, uh, especially with people who have a terrible dysbiosis, to be treated with gut flora treatment for skin challenges. Did you know that the skin also plays an important role in regulating body temperature? It does so by sensing temperature with its you know, thermoreceptors 
at, which are all around the body and then helps regulate the temperature by managing a sweat based temperature controlled system. So sweating helps regulate temperature. And we have about 4 million sweat glands on our skin which responds to the brain signal telling them it is hot. You need to lose temperature. You need to bring down the body temperature. So start sweating. Besides the sweat glands and that mechanism of regulating temperature, we have another mechanism in the skin that around the skin that helps regulate temperature. And that is by controlling blood flow itself by either narrowing peripheral blood vessels or dilating them. So by narrowing blood vessels, we can regulate the temperature so that the, so that the blood, blood itself retains the heat or dilating them, which, which increases blood flow and so helps in bringing down the temperature. Fantastic! Did you know that the skin has a layer of cells called the epidermis? Epi is above, so it's above the dermis. It's a very thin outer layer on the skin that contains dead skin cells and has a turnover of complete renewal every 28 days. 28 days is because the skin cells have to be generated from the bottom upwards. So they work themselves up, change the skin structure and become epidermal cells in about 28 days. So did you know that because of this renewal of cells moving from bottom upwards towards the epidermis, we shed thousands of skin cells every minute and at an incredible 30,000 to 40,000 per minute. Wow! Now, sunlight exposure induces the skin's synthesis of beta endorphin, which enters the bloodstream and causes an opioid-like effect. Opioids being the pain-relieving and addictive family to which morphine and heroin belong. So in fact, 20% of beachgoers show signs of sun dependence that would satisfy the symptom criteria for addiction and substance abuse. Amazing! Do you know what erythrophobia is? Well, erythrophobia is a fear of blushing. And none of us enjoy our skin signals to tell the world whether we are embarrassed or we are excited. So erythrophobia happens to many people, especially if you are light-skinned.